This is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be Angels Part 10. Get your King James Bible and uh, turn it to the book of Judges. We're going to do chapter 13. All right, so let's take a look. And the children of Israel did evil again. Why is that not surprising? And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines 40 years. Now the Philistines were, uh, Goliath was a Philistine and he was a giant. Were all the Philistines giants? I don't know. I really don't. All right, so who are these Philistines? In 1 Samuel chapter 17, of verse 1, story of David here. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoshah, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoshah and Azekah in Ephesdamin, I don't know, something like that. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Uh, a cubit is about half a meter, or about 18 inches approximately. So this guy was nine foot tall and whatever a span is. So he was over nine foot tall. So, or three meters. So... Let's go back to Judges. All right, so, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, the tribe of Dan, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her behold now thou art barren and bearest not but thou shalt conceive and bear a son now therefore beware i pray thee and drink not wine nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing sorry no ham dinners at easter Verse 5, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the ha hand of the Philistines. Now, something I considered. Jesus was called... Jesus of Nazareth. And I've heard from the you know who's, the Chosenites, that the Nazarites and the Nazarenes is two different things with different meanings. Which leads me to suspect that it's probably not true since they lie about everything. So, in Lamentations, the Lamentations of Jeremiah, chapter 4, and verse 7, we read the following. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy, which means reddish. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. And what color is rubies? Red. 
their polishing was of sapphire. Now, concerning Jesus, in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 23, And he, Jesus, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. And then in ver, uh, Acts 24 and verse 5, they were, the you know who's, the Chosenites, were complaining. And they says, For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Ooh. You know, here it is. They're uh, opposing the Christians. Now, in Amos 2 and 11, and Amos 2 and 12, we read the following. Now, Amos is complaining, not bragging. And I raised up of your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarenes, uh, no, I'm sorry, Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink, Remember, they were not supposed to drink wine. But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophet, saying, Prophesy not. In other words, keep quiet. We don't want to hear anything you have to say. We're going to do what we want to do. If it feels good, do it. Uh, what was the manta of the Church of Satan? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So, just a little background there on the Nazarites. Let's go back to Judges 13, verse 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite from God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Verse 6, Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated of the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, nor let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, what is thy name? And when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Now, the Chosenites have a thing in their little books that if you know the name of an angel, that you can control them and have them do your bidding. Sort of like you rub the genie's lamp, you know, and then they have to give you three wishes. Well, sort of along that line. You know, I mean, let's face it, people. Angels are far more powerful than humans. And my name's Bob. And uh, you think by knowing my name, you can make me do something? Uh, I don't think so. But that's the kind of nonsense that um, they teach. Besides, uh, God's angels, a, a number of times, they, you know, they, they wouldn't give their name. It's secret. So, in Revelation 19.12, we read, His name, I mean, sorry, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on His head were many crowns, and He had a name written, and He had a name written that no man knew but He Himself. So, what can I tell you? In Revelation 2.17, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. So, I don't know how much, what that has to bear with anything, but I don't know. All right, back to Judges 13, 19. So, Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. And the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands, neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. Samson. It's been a long time since I've read this story. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. Isn't it uh, interesting that uh, David Berkowitz up in New York City called himself the son of Sam? Samuel, Samhain. But hit, this one's name is Samson, not son of Sam. Samson. Uh, and by the way, I heard David Berkowitz got saved in prison and let me tell you something i listened to his testimony and I, you know somebody sent it to me and i thought yeah that's what they all do when they go to prison they all get religion so that you know they can get uh you know they want to get uh let out of jail parole or whatever right but i was amazed he says i'm never going to seek parole he says after all the evil things that i did he says i i just won't do it and I'm paraphrasing, and he plainly said that he was in the occult and all this kind of stuff, and that's why he did all this stuff. And I tell you what, I listened to his testimony, and I, I just, unbelievable. You know, you, I'm sure if you looked it up on YouTube, it's probably on there. Son of Sam testimony. I, yeah, it's interesting. 
but um, you know what can I tell you? I, I I thought it was a bunch of BS, and BS stands for Bible studies, people. If you if you know what I mean, but um, yeah, but hey, God has His remnant, and who am I to judge? So. Verse 25, And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Eshtaol, I guess, something like that. Chapter 14. And Sam, Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Oh boy, here's trouble. Hey, look around, Samson. Aren't there any Israelite women that are, you know, that you're interested in? You know? And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the Phil uh, daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all thy people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Uh, the Bob translation would be, Boy, you ought to take a look at her. She is hot. She's smoking, daddy-o. Women will get you in trouble when you pick the wrong one every time. I'm an expert on that. Trust me. But you get a good one, and, well, it's a blessing from the Lord. And, but his ma, father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dom dominion over Israel. Dominion, dominate. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told them, he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do you know a wedding a wedding feast right and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him and samson said unto them i will now put forth a riddle unto you if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out then i will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garments but if ye cannot declare it me then shall ye give me 30 sheets and 30 change of garments and they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. In other words, they said, We'll take your bet. And he said unto them, Out of the eater come forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take what we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast not put forth a riddle. Uh, thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it to my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while the fe their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because 
she lay sore upon him, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he, Samson, and he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. Mm. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Oh boy. So, not a very smart thing to do. You give away the guy's wife after he, you know, did everything he was supposed to do, right? All right, let's go to for, uh, chapter 15. Verse 1, And it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, and he said, I will... Go in to my wife into the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her, therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes. Can you imagine catching 300 foxes? How how did he do that? Did he set up a bunch of traps or did he chase them down? And he took firebrands and ta uh, turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who hath done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he hath taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter, and he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock, Etam. And the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they, uh, and they answered, To bind Simpson are we come up to do to him as he hath done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock, Etam, and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that thou uh, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me, swear unto me, that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. In other words, you better swear to me that you're not going to fight me. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came in unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. The jawbone of an ass. Sounds like a lot of preachers that I know. 
And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramah Philehi. And he was sore athirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands, fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave and hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Therefore he called the name thereof En Hakor, which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the day of the Philistines twenty years. All right, verse 16. I'm sorry, chapter, Judges chapter 16. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in unto her. What's a harlot? Um, it's a Middle English word, whore. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither, and they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Oh yeah, here's Delilah. And I guess everybody knows this story. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. Wow. They're going to give her, him, uh, her a lot more than uh, the... Uh, you know who's gave Judas Iscariot for Christ. 1,100 pieces of silver. Hmm. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Oh, yeah. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. And the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs, which had not be dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the withs, as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. Looking at him with those sad puppy dog eyes and blinking her eyelashes. Oh boy, those women, they're trouble. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with thee? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherewith thy great strength lieth. Oh boy, Samson, when are you going to learn? 
And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lord of the Philistines came upon, came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Ugh. They poked out his eyes. And brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered him together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. Now, do you know what Dagon was? Dagon was the half-man, half-fish God. He had a fish's tail and a man's from the waist up, a man and his head. Um, have you ever seen a mermaid depiction? How about Ariel, the, uh, the uh, mermaid, Disney's littlest mermaid? Yeah, that's Dagon. That's exactly what Dagon is. You ever wonder why they're poisoning our children's minds with that filth? Oh, but she's so cute, and she's so lovely, and she just wants to be human. And, uh, yeah. Dagon, their god. Not the god of Abraham, not the god of Isaac, not the god of Jacob Israel. Their god. Verse 24, And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. In other words, let's take him out of the grinding house, and we're going to play with him for a while. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the land that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars wherewith the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women and be, they, that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O Lord, I'm sorry, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left, and Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtawah in the burying place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. What does the Bible say about Samson? Here is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. 
book of Hebrews chapter 11. Now, we're not told who wrote the book of Hebrews. The Lord by the Holy Spirit could have had anybody write the book of Hebrews. But there was only one person called to be an apostle who had the training and knowledge to have written this. And I would, if, if, if that's true, and I think it is, my vote would go for Paul. But the book of Hebrews doesn't tell you who wrote it. And I suspect Paul did that for a reason. If he, if he did, you know, some people have different ideas, but I think Paul's the most likely suspect, so to speak. All right, let's read this last chapter, and then we'll close out this study. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Did you know faith is a substance? For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things that were seen were not made of things which do appear. Well, it takes just as much faith to believe in the Big Bang and evolution than it does to believe. And God said, boom, you know. What can I tell you? It takes just as much faith to believe in evolution that it does, you know, in the beginning, God. Take your pick. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. There are only two people that have never died in the Bible, Enoch and Elijah. And the Bible teaches that Elijah is going to come back as one of the two witnesses to confront the beast. And if not dying is one of the characteristics of the two witnesses, there's a good chance that Enoch will be the other one. Although some people will say that it's Moses, you know, and let's face it, at the transfiguration of Jesus, there was Moses and Elijah. Moses was the law, and Elijah was the prophets. So, in Christ, we had the law and the prophets. So, if you think it's Moses and Elijah, you know, that's fine. I, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is, but I'm kind of leaning towards Enoch. Otherwise, Enoch will never die. But in verse 6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous, which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he, knew, uh, he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. 
Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And that's what we should be, strangers and pilgrims on this earth. This should not be our ultimate destination. We're just passing through. Praise the Lord for that. I know one thing. I sure haven't done anything to uh, merit anything that God would offer those that love him. Verse 14, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You want to read about the city? I will maybe we'll take a look at that. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. See, that's why Abraham was not afraid to kill Isaac. He knew that God would raise him up from the dead. Because he said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. In other words, he said, don't leave me here in Egypt. Take me to the promised land with you. Because he knows that in the resurrection, he'll be with his many children and great and grandchildren and great, great, grandchildren and great, 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 great grandchildren. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Ah, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, saying to do, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, Rahab, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say uh, more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak, and of Samson. Oh, Samson. And what shall I say uh, more say? For the time 
would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson. Samson's in the faith chapter. And of Jephthah, of David also, and of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. Do you know in legend, legend, not the Bible, the prophet Isaiah was put inside a hollow log and cha uh, sawed in half. Yeah, I don't know if it was true. I Like I say, it was a legend. But it's mentioned here. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. That means having nothing people. The people of God. They were stoned, sawn asunder, tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And you got all these people that believe in the pre-trib rapture. God would never do all these things to us. Really? Really? Where's that in the Bible? Oh, that's right. The Gospel of Judas, chapter 66 and verse 6. Believe in the pre-trib rapture in Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I guess. So, all right, well... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, in His precious name, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen.